Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotac and iOS 18.1 RC released a few days ago and iOS 18.2 beta one released a day after that. There's even more features and changes to talk about since the iOS 18.2 beta one is out what's new video. And we'll talk about the overall experience since we're expecting iOS 18.1 in just a couple days. We'll talk about not just my experience, but your experience based off the YouTube community poll, where at the time of this video, there's over 23,000 votes and over 319 comments. I've gone through all the comments to determine what the experience is like. So be sure to stick around as I'll read some of those toward the end of the video. Now, first though, it's time that we finally get iOS 18.1 and Apple intelligence. Apple is bringing iOS 18.1 with the first version of Apple intelligence to the public on Monday, October 28th. So many of you that have been waiting for this, it's now time it's finally here and it's going to release very, very soon or by the time you're watching this video. So that's great news. And as far as iOS 18.2, well, that brings the second set of Apple intelligence. Many of you are still waiting for the gen Moji and image playground overall sort of experience to try that out. And there's sort of a wait list. However, it's more of a request and Apple seems to be putting that on hold for a lot of people. If you go into your settings, many people have been asking me, what did I do in order to enable that? And I didn't do anything specifically. I just requested it and then it worked. It worked about 30 seconds to a minute later. Again, I didn't do anything special. Thankfully it just worked and I was able to share it with you in videos. Now, before we talk about quite a few new features, Apple is actually testing an app to help those who are pre-diabetic. It'll allow them to track and manage what they eat and to help keep track of blood sugar levels. This is using maybe a third party device. It's not using something Apple was using, but apparently they're working on this as Apple has been working on sensors for quite a few years for the Apple watch to allow you to track your overall glucose levels. So until we have that, maybe they'll get this app moving and release that to help those that are pre-diabetic or even diabetic later on. Now, if you're someone that tests pre-release software, not just betas, but maybe uses test flight that actually got an update this week. That's pretty significant. It has a redesign and it includes invitations, which include a beta app description and developers can also now choose to include screenshots in their categories. They can also set test criteria as well. And it has a redesign. So if you're using test flight, make sure you update this and you'll get this new design as well. One other thing I wanted to mention before we talk about new features is Apple is going to be announcing quite a few things this coming week. They actually let everybody know on Twitter, you'll see Greg Joswiak, their senior vice president of marketing actually said, Mac your calendars. We have an exciting week of announcements ahead starting on Monday morning. So not only will we get iOS 18.1 with Apple intelligence, we're also set to get new Macs. We're expecting updates to the iMac as well as maybe the Mac mini having a redesign as well as the MacBook pro getting an updated chipset all to M4 chips. So M4, M4 Pro and M4 Max, maybe a few surprises, but they didn't have an event. So I would expect just a few things, but maybe an all new Mac mini that has a whole redesign. So those things should start rolling out Monday. And again, with Apple intelligence with iOS 18.1. Now, as far as new features to use Gen Moji, you must have stickers enabled. So for those of you that want to go into messages in order to use Gen Moji like this, you'll actually have to have stickers enabled in order to see it. Then you'll have the button here. You'll see I have stickers enabled where I still have this bug with sort of the blank spaces. If I turn off stickers, those go away within our keyboard settings. If we turn off stickers and then go back to messages within messages, if we go to our emoji keyboard, we no longer have those spaces, but we don't have the option for gen emoji. If we go back, turn it back on, go back in, go to the keyboard, you'll see it shows up again. So just keep that in mind. And now it looks like maybe it, well, it didn't fix the gaps, but it looks like that's something they need to fix there. Now, if you're using tinted icons on the home screen, so maybe we press and hold, go to edit, go to customize, go to tinted, it will try and match what we have here. So let's brighten the background. And then if we go into settings, Apple has updated this where some of the icons are actually tinted, not all of them, but you'll see Apple intelligence and Siri. And if we scroll down, you'll see more with the game center, iCloud wallet and Apple pay. So for whatever reason, they're not tinting everything, but they are tinting more across the OS. This includes notifications as well as the share sheet. If we go to share something, whether it's a website or something else, you'll see the icons are now tinted there as well. So that's something you can use if you want to let me change this back. If we go into the news app on iOS 18.2 beta one, you'll see, we now have the option for Sudoku. This is on news plus. So if you subscribe to that, we now have quartiles as well as mini and crossword. So they've added Sudoku on 18.2 beta one. 
Now, if you're playing music and you're using your AirPods, so I have those connected. If we press and hold, we have options for other things such as conversational awareness. We have transparency and we also have adaptive audio modes. Adaptive audio gets a new icon. This used to be a rainbow before. Now it's just sort of a blue icon. So that's something they've updated. If we go over to the stocks app, they've updated this with after hours and pre hours updates. So you'll see this here where after hours is changing as well within notes. If maybe we're composing something or we bring up our writing tools or wherever we can bring up our writing tools and we go to compose tap on compose. We actually have the option to add a couple different file types. We can add a file or image so that we can base whatever we're wanting it to compose off of that information within the app store. If we go into that, go to the arcade section, then go to all games within all games in the upper right. We now have a sorting option as Apple adds more Apple arcade games. We now need to sort things if we're trying to find something specific. And then you can see a drop down filter where we have controller support, multiplayer age ratings and more. So that's something they've added with this beta update. If we go into voice memos, there's an update here as well. Maybe we want to record something. So now we'll record a voice memo talking about the new features in iOS 18.2 beta one. So you'll see, we have that here and we can actually layer different recordings on top of one another. So if we go into it, let's go in here and now we can add another, go to the plus button and now we can record a second track. Now this is a track on top of what I just said so that we can maybe have a conversation back and forth and you can use separate recordings for that. So you'll see the different layers here as we go back and forth, we can switch between them and see those different layers. If you're in the European union, you actually now have the option to delete many of the major apps within your iPhone, whether that's messages, cameras, photos, the app store or Safari, but you may not be able to get them back just yet. If you delete them, I've heard of some people also deleting image playground and not being able to get it back without reinstalling iOS 18.2. So it looks like we're going to have those options, but you may want to hold off on doing that just yet. And within settings under Safari, if we scroll down, you'll see a new section for history and website data. You can import export or clear history and website data. You can import things such as bookmarks, history extensions, and more just choose a file and it should bring that in. And in the European union, iOS 18.2, once it's released, according to code recently found by nine to five Mac, it looks like you'll actually be able to use third party browsers with their own browser engine. This is something we knew was going to be released, but it looks like they're finally going to do this. That means they no longer have to use Safari or WebKit, where they currently do. If you're using Chrome or Firefox, it's basically just a skinned version of Safari. So they'll be able to use their own engine later on. And if you're downloading a file in Safari, as I am right here, if we swipe home, it now shows in the dynamic Island. So this is just a test file, as you can see here, and it's showing me the download status. So this is something new in 18.2 beta one. If we go into podcasts and then we go into the library, then we go to categories. We can now favorite categories. So if we want to manage, maybe we'll manage this category. You'll see favorites here. So maybe we want news and let's see if we have tech news. We'll favorite that we'll uncheck news then tap done. And now we have tech news at the top as a favorite. Something else that's updated is the health app in Canada. It looks like we now have sleep apnea detection. So if you actually go under respiratory, you'll see it there for sleep apnea. If you scroll down, you can learn more about that with sleep apnea in Canada. So let me know if that's enabled, if you're using 18.2, as far as releases this week, well, we did get an AirPods firmware update, preparing it for the hearing aid functions in iOS 18.1 for the AirPods pro two version seven B one nine. I have a separate video on that. And also we had a bunch of RC two versions release candidates are the final version, but if they find a bug, they come out with release candidate two. So they did that this week with Mac OS 15.1 RC two. We also had TV OS 18.1 RC two along with vision OS 2.1 RC two. So far we haven't had one for iOS, so we could have a different build number, but Apple is expected to release iOS 18.1 to the public on the 28th this coming Monday. So it's going to be out. Apple intelligence will be here, but whether or not it's the same build or not, we won't know until it's released. Then we'll move on to iOS 18.2 beta one. And with that version, I would expect that probably not this week with beta two releasing maybe beta two on November 4th or even November 11th. 
then iOS 18.3 beta one after that release and so on. We probably won't see that though until probably December at this point, then Apple goes on vacation. So at this point, we're probably going to have a couple more releases, possibly even an iOS 18.1.1 if there's additional issues. Now, as far as the overall experience this week, well, depending on the version, we'll start with iOS 18.1 since that's coming out very soon. It seems to be very good. It seems like the RC fixed a lot of issues for many people. It's not perfect, but definitely seems to have resolved most issues. There is occasional stutter for some people on older devices, such as this iPhone 11, but in general, it seems to be performing very well. It fixed the heating issues. It seems to be much, much better and definitely more refined. Maybe what iOS 18 should have been, or at least the start of it, maybe the first initial set of Apple intelligence. Now, as far as iOS 18.2, well, that's definitely very buggy. I've had it completely respring on me. When I opened up the camera, I was recording my iPhone 16 pro max one month later video. I didn't put it in that video, but I opened the camera with the camera camera capture or camera control went in and it completely crashed. It respringed the screen went black, it rebooted, and then we were back to the home screen. I also have some issues with mail. While I like the new mail app, it's redesign, I'm not getting any notification badges. I had 50 email yesterday with no notification badge. I went into all my email, they were there, and using the primary email function, it doesn't seem like anything seems to get through unless it's very important, maybe on a VIP list. If we tap on it, we can go to all mail or see the other categories, and you'll see I have different notifications. However, even with do not disturb off, I don't get any notification badges on my mail app. So just be aware of that. If you're using 18.2, that you may not be seeing all your notifications properly. However, it seems to be an okay update. Battery life is definitely not great. And let's take a look at some of that. So with iOS 18.1 RC, it definitely seems like it's pretty good. And thanks to Abishek for sending this in on iOS 18.1 RC. He's got an iPhone 11 pro max with 77% battery health. He's getting six hours and 30 minutes of screen on time, one hour and 59 minutes of screen off time. And that's pretty good with using hundred percent of his battery. So that's a very good stat for an iPhone 11 Pro Max at 77% battery health. Most people are saying it fixed their battery issue, or if they weren't complaining about iOS 18.0.1, it seemed to be pretty decent and basically the same. So that's great news for those using it. As far as iOS 18.2, well, that's another story. My phone is actually heating up quite a bit just from turning on that flashlight and showing you it through this video. But if we go into settings, we'll go to battery, battery health. I'm at 30 cycles with 100% battery capacity. You can see coconut battery here. It's a Mac app that just shows you the information. And if we go down to the last 10 days while it's a beta, and I'm not really complaining that it's poor with a beta one, I just wanted to share with you that it doesn't seem to be too great. Three hours and 40 minutes of screen active time at two hours and 46 minutes of screen idle time. It was last charged and it was on hold due to iPhone temperature and you'll see I'm at 72%. Now that may not seem too bad, but the day before I used 100% of my battery and didn't even manage four hours of screen active time. So it's definitely not great with battery life, but again, it is beta one. iOS 18.1 RC seems to be much better. When it comes to performance, well, I mentioned that a little bit before. Performance on 18.2 and 18.1 is pretty decent. 18.1 will get the occasional stutter on the older devices, just scrolling through different things, going into apps. But in general, it seems to be pretty fast. Thankfully, iOS 17.7 .7 is still available, and 17.7.1 .7 should be out on Monday as well as an alternate. We don't know if they're going to include all of the phones, though, in that download, so we'll have to wait and see. So if you're thinking about that, thinking about downloading, grading, you may want to do that now just in case. So performance though seems to be pretty good. We'll take a look at benchmarks in a moment, but first let's take a look at the overall heat. So this is the 16 Pro Max on 18.2, just sharing what I have with you here. And here's 18.1 RC. On the iPhone 16 Pro Max running iOS 18.2 beta one, we're at about 36 to 36.2 degrees Celsius. On the 16 Pro Max with 18.1 RC, we're only at about 30 degrees Celsius. It's running much cooler. The overall heat signature is much better. And just doing nothing, 18.2 is heating up quite a bit. Now it's at 37.2 degrees Celsius. So in general, it's quite warm. Now let's go ahead and take a look at some of the benchmarks from left to right. We have the iPhone 16 pro max with iOS 18.1 RC. We have iOS 18.1 RC on the iPhone 11 and iOS 18.2 beta one on the 16 pro max here on the right. 
you'll see the iPhone 16 Pro Max with 18.1 RC has some of the best scores I've ever seen. 3,519 for single core, 8,718 for multi-core. So I would say it's doing pretty well. Apple's really sort of refined it with 18.1. And if you're wondering if you should install iOS 18.1 RC, well, I would say you're definitely safe at this point as it seems to be a pretty good update. In general, it seems to be very stable and I can highly recommend it at this point. The RC, unless there's additional issues, Issues should be the same build that's released on Monday. They could have another build, but either way, if you want to try it out, it seems like it's pretty good to do so right now. I would hold off though on iOS 18.2 beta one, unless you have a test device you want to try out. They seem to have issues with heating up, poor battery life. Sometimes it crashes as I mentioned. So I would hold off on that one. As far as what you had to say about the experience, let's take a look at some of your comments. Danny Dan 4253 said, I'm on iOS 18.1 RC on my iPhone XS Max. Battery life for me has been extremely well and less heat. It's greater than iOS 18.0.1 in my opinion. My phone has been overheating and battery life was terrible. So I recommend trying iOS 18.1 RC if you can't wait, or if you can wait until Apple releases it next week. Andrea Gentili 7558 said, just update my 15 Pro to 18.1 RC, and I should say performance is good and no bug for now. Just need to wait for the battery to stabilize. L Chappers G4PTV said, I'm on iOS 18.1 RC on an iPhone 14 Pro Max. Everything seems good. VoiceOver is working very well, although there are some times when it lags or jumps where I don't want it to go. But apart from that, the experience is good in general. We Are All Things says, 18.1 RC finally has stable battery life for me, and 18.1 betas were really rough this time around, so I will stay right here until the official 18.2 releases, if it has equally good as good battery as this RC. Dentist KK said, on iOS 18.1 RC, and it's surprisingly good. Haven't encountered any major or annoying bugs on my iPhone 13. Battery life is slightly improved than 18.0.1, getting around five to six hours of screen on time on a single charge with 90% battery health after 353 cycles. Charles Dunn 7292 said, I'm on iOS 18.1 RC and I can't lie. This is the best performance in battery life I've ever gotten since the entirety of the 18.0 betas began in June. I mean, it obviously is still a beta sort of, but I honestly have zero issues or complaints and I'm on the 14 Pro Max. Dan Spid said, I'm on iOS 18.2 beta one on an iPhone 16 Pro, working really good. Battery lasts basically all day. Just a bit sad I haven't been able to use AirPods Pro 2 hearing aid, although I'm on 7B. Also waiting for Playgrounds access for 24 hours already. A bit disappointed with the way ChatGPT is incorporated. First beta hopefully gets better along the way. So this should be an exciting week with new updates with iOS 18.1 releasing to the public, new Macs to talk about, maybe something else new, maybe an 18.2 beta 2 or public beta release, maybe something else we're not expecting. But we get to finally see how people respond to Apple intelligence, and I'm curious what you think about it. With writing tools, the new Siri animation, even though it's not the new Siri yet, some of the updates with messages, with sort of the suggestions and much more. I'd love to hear what you think in the comments below. And of course, if you're excited for the Macs, let me know about that as well. If you're planning to pick up a Mac mini, iMac or more. So that's everything with iOS 18.1 RC and iOS 18.2 beta one. Now, if you found additional features that I haven't mentioned in the video, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.